so good evening uh, so we are going to take the class today worms parasites we are home to and based on the principle of grained we have to go from what we know to what we don't know so worms we have in this first uh, the title itself there are two important words one is worms and other is parasites so how many worms uh, do you know actually just tell me any kind of worm i'm ringworm ringworm okay any kind of worm the worm in harry potter there was a worm in harry potter i guess so what about round round worm and tape worm yeah round worm and tape worm what about the worm in the fruits are they worms earth worm earth worm very good earth worm and i i need i want you to answer this i am already not a very bright kind of a day today so it has to be the brightness of you kids who has to make it bright tell me which other worms do you know so what do you think you have seen this you have seen in your apple or in your some fruits some worms crawling out you have seen that yeah, have you heard the the uh, sentence that early bird catches and the... all in anime uh, in uh, all all in animations but not in real life <laughs> and i have never seen that in real life you have never seen that in real life seriously yes. then yes. Just, then you are not eating enough fruits <laughs> then you are not eating enough <laughs> ma'am I, i bought a bunch of apples and i ate three apples okay already uh -huh. so either i already uh, ate it either somebody is being very careful but it is very difficult not to find a single worm so uh, or it could be also that remedy is eating worms also without seeing them <laughs> not seeing it that is another another possibility <laughs> no sir i am not eating it like that so i have always washed them when that i peel them and then i eat them <laughs> so we have actually worms worms basically if you if you uh, get a general idea of uh, what a bird catches or even in your animation movies Uh, they are they are certain crawling kind of animals usually without feet sometimes with feet otherwise they are uh, you know kind of a fused body moving very slowly in a peristaltic kind of a motion these are the uh, kind of organisms we usually like to call them worms okay so it's a very generic kind of term what we discover in apple what we what the birds eat and uh, even the early stages of uh, butterfly we we call all of them as worms it's a very very generic generic term now what do you mean by parasites what is a parasite a parasite is something that it drinks blood that drinks blood i thought it was vampire i i want answers and from different people atmika is it the fungus it is the fungus but i mean when you say parasite what what actually would you call as a have you have you heard the uh, english uh, sentence he is a parasite what do you mean by that the no, it depends on the takes nutrition from others yeah so in english when we say he is a parasite what we mean to say that he is not actually giving anything to us but takes from us right that is the general idea that you get he is such a parasite he keeps taking everything he keeps taking advantage of me and these are actually parasites parasites when they come in forms of small little organisms and are dwelling in our body then they are human parasites now they could be dwelling anywhere they could be on a plant and sucking its things they could be uh, they could be like human beings uh, taking advantage of others so in different ways we use the word parasite as well when we talk of parasites in human beings there can be 
two kinds of parasites. One is ectoparasite and another is endoparasite. What do you mean by ecto word? What is an ecto word meaning? Word uh, that says outside. outside. Outside, very good. So ectoparasite is something that is outside the body. So which parasites are outside the body? Any you remember? I think it's mosquitoes. Mosquitoes is parasite. Uh, that there is a doubt on that. Hmm. Why mosquitoes won't be parasite? One uh, uh, small uh, reason would be that they don't actually need, uh, they are not fully dependent on us to survive. Okay. Uh, some of them need our blood or some, some animals blood also for their uh, basic uh, sexual reproduction. That is true. But they, in general, they do not always need uh, a, a human host. Human host is there and that is a time when they are the parasite. So yeah, it is in the borderline. Something else which is definitely a parasite. Head lice. Very good. Head lice is one, right? So head lice and all such uh, small uh, like ticks could be another. Uh, so those who are living outside our body and are sucking blood or uh, living there in whatever way, they are all parasites. But here today, we are concerned with worms and these worms, are, uh, specific worms who are the parasites who live on our body, okay? So who can tell me? Uh, so as I said, worms are, is a small animal with long, narrow, soft body without arms, legs, bones. Okay. This is the general definition. It could mean whatever it could mean. It's a very generic term and it encomp encompasses a lot of other uh, small organisms, which is all right. Now, uh, tell me, how do we get worms? Any idea? If we eat something that is not good for health, do we get worms? We get worms. Anybody else? If we eat something which is not healthy. Healthy meaning? It is not good for our health. Come on. So, uh, would you... Uncooked. Not, not healthy that food. Uncooked food. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... You saw the screen of uh, uh, Satish, sir. He seems to be just living outside in a small hut uh, and there is water outside, right? So what? Uh, how is it possible whether he would be getting worms? What are the possibilities or how he will he be getting the worms? Unclean water. There can be unclean water. And when we say unclean water, what do you mean by that? They are not purified. They are not purified, okay. So, uh, for example, uh, you have got a chicken, right? For a chicken to be, what do you need? A chicken. You need a, you need a hen, right? A hen with, how will you get a chick, a little baby chicken? How will you get? With eggs. You have to have eggs. So, where Satish sir lives, if the water is not pure, in the sense that there are certain eggs of these worms, then he can get infected if he drinks it. Right? That is possible. There are other ways also of getting infected, but for today's session, we will keep it to that it is basically the eggs of the worms which is infecting the uh, human beings. Right? Now, how do eggs come in the water or in the food or in the uncooked food? How, do, how does egg come? Anyone? I think the worms uh, just uh, before going somewhere else, they put it, they come from our body, then just lay their eggs somewhere, then go back to find one more body. That is uh, highly imaginative. Anybody else? 
it is all right i mean see we are all here actually speaking worms uh, is a topic in uh, medicine of second mbbs okay it's a it's a part of uh, microbiology so there we have to discuss and we have to actually break our heads to uh, know what is what are they actually talking about so here we don't have that worry we are not in second mbbs we are here in 6 7 8 9 right so i don't expect something very great from you we are just talking about very common sense terms we are having eggs in the water which satish sir is drinking now satish sir should not be having worms so where are they coming from is there is a very important uh, question to ask satish sir is there a toilet in that hut right are there animals around are they passing the feces directly into the water are there anybody else who is practicing open air defecation do you understand what is open air defecation open air defecation they have been swachh bharat swachh bharat they have been continuously hampering on our heads it has become a criminal act now to uh, go openly in outside for uh, uh, passing for doing potty that is open air defecation right doing potty in the open air is open air defecation you can laugh gargi i love that window in your teeth so that is that is open air defecation and unfortunately the country that we live in we are having lot of people practicing open air defecation and there are many huts and huts like what the picture that satish sir showed they don't have toilets and they they actually practice open air defecation apart from that they also have animals what kind of animals they could be having a cow farm they could be having a pig farm and those people those also could be uh, uh, passing their potty and that potty could be getting mixed with the water and if satish sir is not careful about purifying this water that is being drunk then there could be many eggs which he is ingesting and that is a serious public health issue you agree with that i do very so how do you get infected this is open air defecation people are doing open air defecation and there is some way so there is one is that there are people who are following open air defecation and that uh, is going and mixing uh, somewhere in the water or in the food or in the fields or there is one more way of getting it what is that way so you said uh, gargi that there is unclean food what is that unclean food can you get a uh, uh, worm infet infestation by uh, eating a jalebi naomi can you get can you get a worm infestation by eating jalebi have you gone to a sweet shop what do you observe there what is there to be observed what do they have on the top of whatever sweets they are making they have one lid they have one lid what kind of lid a lid that protects uh, uh, anything to get in like what parasites parasites are roaming around everywhere in gargis area and they will like parasites yeah. so no 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 you are trying to answer my question you have to think about the sweet shop and that lid which is having small small holes what are we protecting it from flies ants ants oh and uh, more than ants we are trying to protect it from flies when we have something sweet or food usually the flies are attracted to it when flies are attracted to it they come and sit on the food right do you know how a fly eats its food any if fits out digesting juice then digest from outside that is accurate yeah yeah rebecca that's absolutely accurate so what it does is 
it spits out salivary juices into the food makes the food dissolve and then sucks it back in right but where else does this fly sit this fly is moving all over the area and it could have sat in this open air defecation area and then come flying to our sweet shop and there its leg and its mouth and everything will be having some of the eggs and when it is spitting out the digestive juices to eat whatever sweet it wants to eat at that time it will infect that and then we will go to the shop and we will buy only 250 grams of jalebi and some eggs right so that is the way another way that the worms get passed another thing is uh, uncooked food right somebody mentioned that if uncooked food is there then you can get worms why do you get worms in uncooked food yes who is going to tell me if it heats up it the eggs would get uh, uh, they would not be able to hatch so and food um uh, cooked food could have those eggs and that can still hatch in our body that is a very good observation so why do we keep on insisting on uh the un the cooked food we keep on insisting on cooking our food because even if we got something which is infected in the vegetables which is having the eggs of these worms if we cook it properly then it will be actually dead and it won't hatch any more inside our body okay that is also the very important reason why we go on insisting on washing your vegetables fruits we put them in uh, more uh, concentrated little salt so all these things we are practicing for Uh, there is one concept of removing the chemicals or pesticides but we are also trying our level best to clean them of or any of the eggs which could have been laid on them okay so these are the primary things which is happening so we basically get infected by food or by uh, water which is already having some kind of worms eggs okay so this is what we call as feco oral transmission feco means that is potty oral is mouth how does feces reach your mouth there are different ways either it could be in going into the water or it could be directly going into the food or there could be flies <clears throat> which are actually picking it up and landing it on the food that you eat so this is what we call as feco oral transmission and this is one of the most important ways to transmit the uh, worms into your body okay <clears throat> so there are uh, basically uh, when we are talking about worms there are as i said we will we will be usually uh, talking about those worms which are moving crawling somehow they are having a fused body they don't have arms and legs but apart from that there are two more things which i want to consider which are actually single celled organisms these are called as entamoeba and giardia okay these are actually not multicellular these are small organs and they don't lay eggs what they do is they produce cyst which is also small microscopic egg like structures they also infect the water they also infect the food so this also we will be taking up the reason why i want to take it up they are parasites they, they are not essentially called as worms but since you are in this session you might as well know because you might have heard that some person suffered from dysentery what is dysentery anybody from loose motion yes what kind of loose motion 
the loose motion in which there is blood in stool okay so uh, the, when there is blood in stool it is called as dysentery and amoebic dysentery is one of the very common uh, diseases that can be present so this is basically caused by amoeba antamoeba histolytica now uh, we are going to learn about various worms today we will be basically uh, discussing about those worms which we can get infected by eating their eggs or cyst in whatever way either eating or drinking so ingesting ingesting in some way the eggs or the cyst we can get infected by these worms or these uh, protozoa which are antamoeba or giardia and they can infect so when i will be taking this presentation further i would be mentioning scientific names i don't expect you to always remember but it is fun to you know just pay a little attention as to what they are just uh, uh, so you can keep that in mind otherwise you can remember the common names it is fine don't pressurize yourself too much to learn this scientific names it is all right so here we are and these are different kinds of eggs can you see all these eggs these are different kinds of eggs there can be uh, all of them are looking like uh, some some kind of so there are different sizes of worms some are microscopic some are uh, some could be actually uh, say 10 cm to 12 cm long and some could be actually as long as your height or a person's height 6 feet 7 feet 10 feet okay so and some are microcellular and we cannot actually uh, see them unicellular and we cannot actually see them without the help of the microscope but these eggs and these cysts could be present in the water or the food that you ingest and that could be the way in which you are infecting yourself so this is what i was talking about there is giardia and antamoeba these are unicellular organisms but they also create havoc in our body and they can create especially antamoeba it can create amoebic dysentery and there can be other uh, uh, ways it, in which it can actually infect the liver Uh, giardia it could actually go on creating lot of gi gastrointestinal disturbances like you could be having flatulence you could be having bloating you could be having indigestion or you could be having diarrhea so these things also create and the mode of transmission is that somehow you have had impure water or food or infected uh, in some way infested by flies okay so to understand actually what is happening once you have ingested an egg or a cyst of a parasite what happens to them what happens it with the same process that will be affecting your food when you ingest food you will take it inside your mouth and then it will go inside your tummy and the same pa path that food will go through the parasite or the cyst actually the cyst or the egg will go through okay so uh, this video is just about how food moves and i want you to pay attention to this video because time and again you will need to go back and imagine how these parasites are actually in which part in which area actually they are affecting our bodies so we take food it goes into your mouth right there is actually lot of salivary juice and that salivary juice actually tries to break it down into simpler carbohydrates then it goes and here i want you to pay attention do you know what is this this is epiglottis okay you get that you understand that somebody has to say yes to that now when you ingest food right right in your uh, pharynx 
this is the place where you are actually having uh, two things one is the entry to your trachea and another is entry to your esophagus okay so when you are breathing the air is going through your trachea when you are eating your food is going through your esophagus this specific little anatomy i want you to remember they are very close they are like two two pipes which are uh, placed adjacent to each other so if this is trachea this will be esophagus okay so they are very close to each other and it is the epiglottis is the gatekeeper which says okay if it is allowing it inside the esophagus it will go into esophagus so the food passes into the esophagus and in the esophagus what happens is that there is a peristaltic movement so it is basically there is muscular contraction and it is moving the food into the stomach and now here you see this is a smooth mucus membrane where the food is actually passing right and it is actually moving through a mechanical process there's only peristaltic movement now it is entering into the stomach so what is there in the stomach what is there in the stomach acid acid we have got not some simple acid like acetic acid or some weak acid we have got hydrochloric acid okay and we have got this strong hydrochloric acid and as soon as some food will come into the hydrochloric acid what will happen to the food it will dissolve exactly it will dissolve it will break into smaller particles it will get its nutrients all there and it will break and it will decide to go further what happens to our eggs of our worms and our cysts and uh, will it float will it float i don't know it could float but anyway whether it floats or not they are having such protective covers around them that they do not dissolve okay so we continue our journey we have the stomach and then after the stomach what comes anybody duodenum exactly so after the stomach comes duodenum and then we have the other part of the small intestine then we will have the large intestine so let us keep looking at it in the stomach there are so the food passes it goes into the stomach it is into the acid it is breaking down into smaller particles there are the stomach is actually having a very protective layer so that it doesn't eat itself up the acid does not actually dissolve the stomach itself okay and then from the stomach it has to go pass air to the duodenum right here it breaks it down and then it goes into the duodenum now small intestine is a very long protein whereas duodenum is not that long it is a smaller portion of the very small part of the intestine okay so now we can see the duodenum is placed very near to liver okay you can identify the liver here this is the liver okay so duodenum is actually in proximity to the liver uh, just so that you remember this anatomy because i will be referring this anatomy again then it passes into the smaller intestine it is only 23 to 28 cm long the food is actually passing through small intestine and small intestine is very very long and in this place is where all we have already broken down the food into smaller particles in the stomach and it is in the small intestine that the 
thing the nutrients will be absorbed throughout so what is missed by the first segment will be taken up by the second by the third whatever we are eating our body insists that as much as it can extract out of it it will try to extract so the food keeps on passing passing and passing and whatever it cannot absorb whatever it cannot take in it will remain in this passage and it will slowly go into the large intestine and if you notice we are in the large intestine now the difference between the small intestine and large intestine is there is that whatever we had very uh, intricate and delicate work mucous membrane in the small intestine here it is smoother here we absorb the water whatever water is there that is being absorbed and whatever waste is there that is being pushed the large intestine slowly goes it reaches and it reaches the rectum where it is stored and then we pass it through anus we have learned to have our motions once or twice in a day and we have those control on our external sphincter and also a circadian rhythm so that we pass motion once or twice in a day so this is what is happening to food and i think now you understand now in the same process when we are ingesting the eggs or the cyst it will go through like that and as i said these are very resistant to the acid in the stomach so it will pass down into the duodenum so different worms act in different ways in this but basically the eggs and the cyst that we ingest behave in this particular manner so this is actually the anatomy or the electron microscopic view electron microscopic view of the small intestine what you see is villi what is villi they are like finger like projections so as you can actually make out when it is a smooth area then the surface area for absorption would be very less when there is villi there is absorption the area surface area for absorption is much much higher and in each of these places it is not a very simple kind of an absorption it is right now beyond the scope of our lecture but we have different enzymes different metabolic processes which are happening here so each villi is actually responsible for doing lot of job and lot of functions but it is in these places that our cysts are coming and landing most of them come and sit in the duodenum so now we come to giardia so uh, you don't have to bother about how very uh, complicated this looks this is the cyst of giardia we are taking it in whatever way it could be infected water it could be infected food it could be flies which has infected we take it it goes it goes into the stomach it goes and passes and goes into the small intestine into the duodenum and there it sits and there it actually turns into whatever it is called as trophosomes okay that is a worm uh, 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 by itself and then uh, we pass it in the stool and it goes away and then it is over now when it is not over you have taken one cyst and you have made it into an adult trophozoid a giardia and that giardia you have passed okay maybe now more number of cyst one egg you had taken now 10 eggs one it has passed but here comes another very important thing that when you go to the toilet what is the most important instruction being told to you from grade 1 what are you supposed to do wash your hands wash your hands, wash your hands. and this is the significance because even if you have infect in you got infested with one or two giardia it will not be significant unless again and again you are infecting it unless whatever is living in your intestine is reproducing itself to that extent that it will cause a problem otherwise it is a one cell organism it it can only do that much of harm for it to do harm it has to be many in number and many in number happens when we take like 10 cyst we have ingested 10 cysts have been turned into trophozoites they have produced so many cysts those cysts again we are ingesting 
then again we are having we don't have that nice habit of cutting our nails we don't have the good habit of washing our hands then it is a big problem because we go on infecting ourselves in the same way ant amoeba also does we take the cyst it goes inside but here as i said how you to remember that this stomach and this duodenum it is very near to the intestine it is very near to the liver right so what it actually does is that this could actually get into the blood and go into the liver okay when it goes into the liver it produces liver disease and that can be a amoebic abscess again a very dangerous kind of a disease which can be there and all that happens just because you have ingested cyst it has gone to the stomach and from the stomach it has gone to the duodenum from the duodenum it has gone into the blood circulation and from the blood circulation it has gone because liver was very near to it it jumped into the liver it settled down there it found it is very good place for getting all kinds of nutrition and it formed an amoebic abscess okay so here uh, this is what we are talking about ant amoeba and giardia now we come to the actual worms that today we are going to discuss now there can be these are the worms that are this is actually like a horror movie uh, and once you see this i think you will never forget to uh, wash your hands or wash your vegetables or wash or be very careful about what kind of water you are drinking and will be very happy that uh, people boil their water and purify their water so uh, what are the, we are going to discuss the worms which are called as helminths it is all right helminths are worms that is fine but what is interesting is that 1.5 billion humans are infected with these worms they are infected but many of them have no idea we are getting infected every day we are eating we have to eat chaat we have to eat some good thing we are going outside there are flies on the thing but it's all right we have taken worms inside worms are living inside us it's all right it's a parasite it is taking our nutrients but we don't bother we don't need to know it is taking our nutrient we eat more food and it is all settled there is a good balance and we are all right so many of them are asymptomatic uh but there can be issues and so now we are going to take one by one each worm it this one is called as a whip worm and its name is also there trichuris trichura okay that you might remember you might forget it is all right but it is a very interesting name if you want to pick it up great but it is called a whip worm it is called a whip worm for a simple reason because it looks like whip can you see it is like a whip its shape is like a whip and this is very interesting it is very interesting because it's a very small teeny weeny worm but it has got everything you you can see there is a there is a cloaca right that's a place that uh, they they use for uh, uh, passing their excretory things there is an ejaculatory duct okay they have sexual organs testes they have vas deferens another sexual organ they have intestine okay so they they have it's it's uh, very very interesting as to what all they have in this teeny organism they have the entire system and they are all ready there to infect us and bother us how do they infect us again we have their eggs we eat them in whatever way and it goes to the intestine and this uh, and then they are living there they become the adult worms they they have the male and the female now here in the intestine they marry each other okay and then they produce more eggs and those eggs are passed in the feces and this if we ingest it again otherwise now we have the mummy and daddy of the worms so they can have as many children as many times they will copulate right so these are there if once we are getting infected they could be there these are the worms called as whip worms for the shape that they have and this is how they look i i i know that they look very yucky but this is how they look actually 
Okay. So next comes pin worm. Okay. And this pin worm is one of the worms which is like uh, florid in the population. There are many people who are actually infected with this pin worm. Now, how do you find, there are people, you know, some, some children or some adults also. It could be a habit, but some of them are constantly scratching their butt. Okay. Yeah. So when they're scratching their butt, what is happening? Some of them get a lot of itching in the night. It is itching in the night. They are really bothered. It's itching, itching, itching all the time. Or if there is a class, grade one, grade two, you find one child is itching, the other child is itching. You say, what the hell? Are you not actually washing your butt properly? But no. Otherwise, there might be some children who will be waking up in the night and say, oh, this is itchy, this butt is itchy, this butt is itchy. And there is not much to be seen there. But we are having... Uh, this is the most common helbin which actually infects people. And uh, it again, how does it happen? It comes, we take it, we ingest it and uh, it stays there in the gut and then it goes, it becomes the adult worm and adult worm is passed in the stool. Now it is not actually always just passed in the stool. The mummy is very smart of especially this pin worm. And what it does is that, what does, what does the, all the organisms want from, we want, like humans, they want that so many of us should be there, that the whole world should be actually occupied. All, all the organisms basically want many more of them, right? So this pin worm also has this basic idea that there should be as many pin worms as possible. So once we have ingested the egg, the, it has become into adult. Then there is a mummy and daddy. And then they can lay eggs. Eggs are being laid. But the mummy is very smart. And what she does, she waits to lay her eggs. And she goes and lays them when? In the night. Okay. So how does she go and lay eggs? Where is she laying eggs? She is not passing in the stool. She is not just letting the eggs pass. She wants to confirm that the children who are somehow eating dirty food, they should get reinfected. So what does she do? She goes and passes the worm, passes the eggs exactly outside the anus, right in the periphery of the anus. And when those eggs are laid in the periphery of the anus, what happens? That the child finds it very itching and he starts scratching his butt. When this mummy is coming out, sometimes some of them would stay there or some of them would pass when the child or the person is passing motion. Okay. So actually to diagnose them, what is done, and this is just interesting, you can see here scotch tape test. So I'm just mentioning it. What we do is we put a scotch tape on the just exactly near the anus because the mummy will be coming and laying eggs she doesn't know whether it is the outside of the anus or the scotch tape so she will also lay eggs on the scotch tape when she lays the eggs on the scotch tape and morning we will take the scotch tape and look and we will find oh this is what pin worms eggs right that is one way of finding them another way is finding them is to actually find the worm, okay? And this is, uh, this is actually, unfortunately, a common sight than not a common sight. There are many, many children who are infected. And this, you can see, this is the you know, diagrammatic representation. They are just, you know, uh, uh, half an inch or one inch long. So there are small, small pin-like worms which could be there, which could be present in the anus and because of how they are, we are we call them. What they do, they take our, they steal our this and they also create a lot of itching and there can be a lot of local reaction. There can be red uh, redness around, redness and excoriation around the anus. And when a, when a child is continuously itching the butt, we say, oh, it is possible that this child is having worm infestation, okay?
now we come to round worm and round worm is what we call as uh, ascarius lumbricoides okay you may remember you may forget it's absolutely all right so now this is also we ingest the round worms we ingest its uh, egg and it goes into the stomach and there into the intestine it becomes into the adult worms and then it gives the small fertilized eggs and there these fertilized eggs can change into larvae okay now we are having a little deviation once this larva is there what will it do we have the it is in close proximity to blood vessels right so it goes into the blood from the blood where will it travel if something goes into the blood where will it go to the liver it can go to the liver but if it is something is in the blood something is in the vein where would it go heart lungs yes it would first go to the heart right and then it would go to the lungs because we want to purify it right so this great smart worm round worm the larvae baby larvae they get into the blood stream they travel all the way to the heart from the heart to the lungs from the lungs they travel into where alveoli they are into the alveoli air spaces if they are into the air spaces where will they go now it is a lung okay alveoli they are like wow this is oxygen great now we are here they have a whole lung structure they have this it's like a caved it's like a maze which is which they are having and they discover their way up from alveoli to bronchioles from bronchioles to bronchi from bronchi to trachea and now i want you to remember that that our esophagus and our trachea they are both situated near so once they are into the trachea they will climb up from the trachea and enter back into the esophagus and here we are reinfecting ourselves and this smart worm has not only gone into our gut not only gone into our stomach and intestine it has traveled all the way to our heart and lungs and seen everything inside and it has climbed from the trachea to the esophagus now this is this is unfortunate right this is how the smart worm looks like there is a mummy and there is a daddy right and they happily marry each other this is how they look you could actually pass an adult round worm in the stool so apart from the eggs passing in the stool there can be and this is long long in the sense that you could be 7 8 inches more than that also so this big long thing could come out from the anus in the stool and actually it has happened people some of the people they bring saying that i have passed an earthworm and they bring it in a tissue paper and see doctor look i have passed an earthworm from where it has come that this is not an earthworm earthworm will be an earth this is a round worm you are the proud owner of these round worms which are actually traveling all over inside your body right so now as you see right most of these worms they are actually how do they produce disease they produce disease by stealing your nutrients right or they produce by just being there you see this uh, 10 10 inches of worms if all of them are there in, inside the uh, intestine they would actually become a block right so they will actually all come together and they come they might block so there can be actually a physical blockage because of these worms then they travel all the way right inside your so when they are traveling they are not happily going they will be actually harming what 
what the way they are traveling, either going into the uh, lungs, wherever they are going, they are making a track, they will be harming. And now these are not our own body's uh, things, right? So what do we have against them? What happens if some foreign substances come inside our body? Immune system. Immune system, yes. So what, what happens? It is basically we want to reject it. We do not want anything foreign inside us. We do not want them to live in us. So our body will produce a very strong immune reactions. So the diseases which are produced by this is either they are stealing our nutrients or they are causing a physical blockage or the path that they are traveling, they are producing some really uh, such a reaction that it will uh, be difficult or they, uh, uh, they are actually uh, producing such load, they are going into such uncertain places like liver and all, and they produce such infections. So especially roundworm, because it is traveling in the blood, it is traveling to the heart, this is traveling to the lungs, it is a very nasty kind of a worm, and it can produce really very bad symptoms. And uh, so uh, one of them, which is very common, is what we call as its effect on the lungs, it, is, it comes there and the people are coughing, they have respiratory symptoms, they have no idea. We have got all kinds of other allergic reactions. We think of bacteria, we think of viruses, but here it is our dear darling larvae of the roundworm hurting us like this, okay? And one last thing that I want you to recollect is the electron microscopic uh, uh, picture of the intestine. So you see all those villi, when these worms, they settle down in the small intestine, in the duodenum, they actually physically destroy or they, they sit there, they change the shape, they flatten these villi, they can harm this villi. So whatever actual absorption of the real good food that we are eating, we may not be able to absorb it. And, and then that will create other different problems. Okay. So I think today we will stop this lecture here. But what I want you to take home from this is that when we discuss worms, we discuss all the worms or we should discuss or we should know why we should discuss all worms or why we, we, can, we have to be concerned about all worms. Anybody? To know about because when one person is getting, it is not like we have got some uh, flavored uh, feces water or something, okay? The, if there is this worm, it is very likely that that worm also might be there, okay? If it is infected water, if it is infected food, if it is very likely that there are a mix of worms which are possible, okay? Some of them can be asymptomatic. Some of them would actually lead into such symptoms that we have to be very careful and look at them. So the take home message that we have today, number one, Rebecca, tell me the take home message for today. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Second lesson, Atmika. A drink purified water. Yeah, drink purified water or boiled water. Tom? Clean your food or cook your food. Yeah, cook your food. And if you are eating uncooked food, it has to be clean. So especially when you are going to the restaurants, then the salads which are being served, right? You cannot be sure about them. The uncooked food, you cannot be. When it is your mummy who is cleaning it properly, and I hope your mummies are cleaning your food properly, then it is. Then we can still trust it. But otherwise, even with all the vitamins and minerals, if your uh, restaurant person by chance is infected by fecal oral root, if his hands are infected, he could pass on that to your salads. And it might be a very bad idea to eat the salads if we are not very sure from where it is coming and how clean it is. Okay. So this is the mother of all problems. That, and it is very simple thing to solve. You're supposed to have clean, purified or boiled water. You're supposed to have cooked or clean 
food you're supposed to be away from flies and you're supposed to also be the proponent of uh, having toilets in the home it is very important that you wash your hands after going to the toilet and you cut your nails so uh, let me end here uh, i hope you understood and i also hope that you paid a little bit of attention to the scientific names because this is one assignment i'm going to give you i hope you will visit that page so thank you so much you have been amazing children i would prefer more children to be participative here we are not talking anything other than common sense so so be free and be there take care